wonderfully and beautifully made. That's what you are. Someone says to me that I'm not handsome. That's your opinion. It's your business. Isn't it? If anybody tells you that you are ugly, tell the person that ugly is a definition. Somebody must be ugly sometimes to somebody. Maybe you are true. But there's somebody that I'm not ugly to. I am very beautiful. I may be ugly in your own face. Go and look for the one your face will, will, will be beautiful to your face. He needs to go to um, optician <clears throat> to go and get um, a lens. I think they need to correct his lenses. Because when God says something, anybody who says something different to that cannot see correctly. You understand the Jeremiah you read today? God saw Jeremiah's vision. He said, can you see? Jeremiah said, I cannot see. He now, God now took the word, the same word, put it in his mouth and sealed the mouth. Swallow it, Jeremiah. He swallowed it. Now showing the same thing. Jeremiah said, now I can see an almond tree. God will open your eyes. Amen. You are good. And then the next verse says, I love this. We are going to. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. Yes, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing, so God stopped working. Then so on the seventh day, what happened? What did God do? What did God do? I cannot hear you. So God starts speaking. That is where my title comes from. God starts speaking. But his voice is still hard till today. When God starts speaking, what happened? You know, God now brought, God created the man. He brought all animals to the man that he created. And I said, man, what is this? A man said, it's elephant. He said, that's just correct. What is this? Man said, his eye is a lion. He said, that's just correct. Man gave name to every creature. God stopped speaking because he assigned man to start speaking. It is your time to speak. Yeah. Everything, whatever man named the animal, the thing, that's what God called it. <clears throat> because God had rested from his labor. He had been speaking for seven days. Now, he said to man, it's your time to speak. We are still in the seventh day of God. God is resting cool in heaven. When the seventh day is over, God will come back to this earth in his real physical form, and all mankind will see him, even those who pierce him at the ribs. And those who believe in him, through which Jesus Christ, will now be with him forever. Then we will see God in his true form, and we now know, we will understand better what he's telling us. Now I want you to know this. When God rested, he appointed you to start speaking. So it's your turn to speak. It is your time to speak. Look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11. It says, so is my word that comes out from my mouth. It will not return to me, what? Empty. And we have gone through the word now spoken. They happen as God has said. The word didn't return back to heaven. They remained there and made those things happen as God has designed, desired. Now, go to Isaiah 51, verse 16. I said when God saw speaking, he appointed you to carry on the speaking. Shall we read it together, please? I have put... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Who speaks for God now? <clears throat> Listen. When God starts speaking... God raised a people. He created Adam in his image and his likeness. And so Adam continued to speak. 
And what Adam said was so. Until Adam fell. And Jesus came to the scene. And restored back the authority which Adam lost. And from the time of Jesus, man began to speak on the behalf of God. Even you will see in the Old Testament that God will assign one person at a time or two or three. And they will become the voice of God. And those who want to know what is God saying, we go to them and they will tell them what God is saying. So God is in the business of no more speaking, but through the lips of mortal men. Now for you tonight, I want to understand. God said, I have put my words in your mouth. Look, look, this is your mouth. Now mouth of God. You didn't hear what I said? There is one pastor in Nigeria. He used to come to their uh, prophetic voice. I still remember him in this room. When we tell the pastor that lead us in praise and worship, he will say, this is my mouth too. Now God do mouth too. He go speak big, big words. <laughs> this is my leg oh. Now God do leg oh. He go go great, great place. It seems as if it does not have rhythm, isn't it? I tell you that there is no rhythm like that rhythm. Then you say, this is my head, you. Now God do head, you. He go do great, great things. He does not have any song, but that song every day. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Does someone think that the man does not know what he's saying? No, he knows what he's saying. Because God said, I put my word in your mouth. I put my word in your mouth. If you look at the book of uh, 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 2 Kings chapter 4, there's a story of one of us in 2 Kings chapter 4. I love it so much. I was sharing this with men today. In 2 Kings chapter 4, let's look at it together. And I will give you some things there. The word of God is put in your mouth so that when you speak it, it is the word of God. Understand, I've taken you through all what word of God is that when God speaks, he said the word that come out of my mouth shall not return back to my mouth empty. It shall go forth and it will do what I desire and it carries my purpose and it will be accomplished. So Satan can stop anything but the word of God. He can't. People can plot against anything but the word of God. Uh, when God spoke his word among us just the last, the, the, the last Friday of uh, September and said that she will be your leader, she will be your prime minister, and everybody was confused. Uh, oh, Ricky Trina is going to be the prime minister. You know, even some people gave their loyalty who are more. It seems as if it's not going to be. But because it is the word of God, when the morning came, and the announcement was to be made. It was the person God said. The woman that looked like a reed, she looks lifeless, but yet she carried power. When God said to us that when she comes in, the moment she comes in, they will want to uproot her. Did you not hear that again and again? How sensible it is for a, a nation to choose a prime minister and within seven days want to remove the prime minister. Who, who, which nation had ever done that? It doesn't mean with common sense. But it's happening in first world country, United Kingdom for, for that matter. Do people not think? No, they have to do because God has revealed what they will do. They have to do it. The word of God cannot be conspired against. When God spoke about Cyrus, though he was a godless man, he was an unbeliever, he said, but he will let my people go. He will build that citadel of, 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 of my people. And when Cyrus came, he destroyed everybody, but not Israel. He said, we must build the house of the God of Abraham. Listen to me. Because it is the word of God that came before he was born. The word of God can never be challenged. It can never be sabotaged. But guess what? Can you imagine? God said, I put that word in your mouth. In your mouth. So why don't you speak it? Why do we think those who speak it are somebody that others are not? Everyone born of God. God put his word in your mouth. Say it. 
You must exercise that authority because it was not given to you by man, but by God who has been speaking and is not speaking and is waiting for you to speak. Look at that scripture in the book of First Kings. I won't read everything. I'll just take you through the scenarios and show you some few things. Second Kings, sorry. Second Kings chapter 4. Always, always put that in your mind. They, it began by the story of a woman, a woman, a widow, you know, who was the wife of a prophet. And this woman, the husband died, who was a prophet, and left debts. So that the, the, de the, the, the creditors have come to take the children. That's how they do it that day, as surety, until you pay the money. She was a widow, and all her children are to be taken. Tell me, what sort of life is that? Is that not the most miserable life for a woman? Your husband just died. You are doing the, 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 the funeral, and then come your door. Back, 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 back. Open the door. You thought they came to mourn. They said, all of you are under arrest in this house because your father owed us. This is the evidence. So you, 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 you remaining. Uh, Joseph, Daniel, Mary, you are under. It's like bailiffs knock your door. They carry the children. Now, let me help you know this. The woman has a knowledge of the God of Israel, but she does not know the God of Israel. Because she need not go to the prophet if she knew that the word is in her mouth. She went to the prophet. The prophet said, okay, what do you want? She said, this is the position. The woman said, okay, what do you have? She said nothing. She said nothing, isn't it? Why did she say nothing? It's not because it's nothing, but because she has just in the house. <clears throat> I want you to read the scripture in the context. The woman had nothing except little bottle of oil. Vast. She called it vast. Small thing like this. You know, like a, a small pot, uh, 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 you know, pot of her oil. But that woman does not understand that God had put the word in the mouth of his own children. They only need to speak it. So the man of God said, go borrow barrel, not by the Holy Spirit, but by Elisha, his word. Because in the mind of Elisha, Elisha has seen that small oil fill every barrel that is empty. Look, your perception, if you carry the word of God, your perception must change to the perception of God who sees everything possible before he spoke them to be. That is one of the problems that hinder believers. You speak the word, you don't have understanding. In your mind, you cannot paint what you happen. You cannot set to what you happen and you speak. The word will not, be, it will, it will not manifest. Elisha saw that that small oil can fill barrels, though it is small. But for it to happen, the mouth of God must speak. And God has stopped speaking. He has put the word in your mouth. So the word I speak is God. That is what Elisha understood. And he said, go pour it on all the empty barrels. Listen to me. The woman took the, they the went to borrow barrels until the, there is no more room to borrow barrels. And she took that little vase. I can imagine the woman, you know, the first time she's pouring the, uh, the oil. The fact is that, that that little vase of oil did not increase. It remained little. But when she began to pour, she discovered a big barrel of many gallons filled up to the brim. She put to the other one, filled to the brim, until all empty barrels were filled. The, the oil continued to pour until the last barrel was filled. Is that not correct? That the word of God will remain with you until it is achieved, accomplished. It fulfills the desire and the purpose of God. It doesn't matter how old you are. The word is over you. Every word spoken over your life, they keep hanging over your head until they are fulfilled. They can't go back to God. They must go report, but they cannot go until they have done what was said understand but you must cooperate with the word because that woman would have said that ah, how can how dare this problem? i even thought he would give me money i even thought he would introduce me to the king so that he can give me money 
How do you hear him say that I should go and take a small bottle? Uh, there's no common sense in it. If you look at that Isaiah 55, I will read to you now. He says, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. Did you not listen to me when I was reading? God said, let there be lights in heaven. Every light bid. Don't you know how many light we are still studying? We just discovered that there are so many billions of galaxies that we've never discovered in science. Just recently we discovered them. Bigger than the galaxy we are. And God spoke them to be. That same God said, you speak on my behalf. What you say is what I have said. Whatever you call your condition, that is what it will be. Whatever you say to your situation, that is what your situation will be. Somebody will change his mind from this hour and begin to speak right to his own life. Begin to speak good into his own life. You don't use your mouth to dedicate yourself because you carry the life of God in your mouth. You do not speak like the people speak. That is, that is famine. That is inflation. I understand that. In my house, there is no inflation. No deflation, no inflation. We are normal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God. You have it. Let me show you something else about this man. I told the man, I just love this guy. <laughs> he was just a, 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 a farmer. Uh, with some cows and doing his business uh, as a farmer. And then another man just came and said, put his mantle on him, say, follow me. I said, ah, let me go and, uh, and uh, say to myself, and I'll follow you. Because he had farm. So he had to go and sort his farm out, and then he followed the man, Elisha. From the time he followed Elisha, he began to study Elisha. How Elisha speaks, how Elisha operates, how he prays, the confidence. He, built, he was a farmer. He built his confidence from Elisha's confidence. Because there was a time Elisha would be no more. And when Elisha was no more, the guy just caught bazooka. The first experiment, he saw Elisha speak Jordan. That is the very spot where we baptized those who went to Israel this very year. He got there and said, where is the God of Elijah? And boom, the sea parted. And the people who saw him, who have been telling him, said that, wow, all of them ran down from the hilltop and they bowed before him and worshipped him. He said, it's not worship. There is a God in Israel. What he says must come to pass. He distinct himself among the sons of prophet. You have to distinct yourself among Christians in this world. See with the eyes of God, reason with the mind of God, and speak things on behalf of God. In the same, in the same scripture, you read about the Shunammite woman, but I'm not talking about that. I'll talk about two more, and then we go pray. Look at verse 38. Elisha returned to Galgiliad, Gilga, and there was famine in that region. And he went to the region of famine. Interesting. While the company of the prophets were meeting with him, he said to them, to his servants, put on a large pot and cook some stew for this man. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found it, found a wild vine, poison. He gathered some of it in, uh, uh, of, of his gods, that is a very much you know, deadly poison, and fill the fold on uh, his cloak. When he returned, he caught them up into the pot of stew. Though, <laughs> I love this, no one knew that this, they, they, no, what, what, they were, they, what they were. The stew was poured out from the man, poured out for the man, but as they began to eat, they cried out, O oh, man of God, there is death in the port, and they could not eat. So all of them were rolling on the floor. Hey, death in the pot. Death in the pot. I want to see what happened with this Mr. Elijah. He says, Elijah said, get some flour. He put it into the pot and said, serve it. The food that was poisoned, he poured flour into it and said, Sir, I want any scientist that can tell me the medicinal power in flour. Flour is raw. 
that it can cure poison. He said, flour, they brought it. Mm. Stir it together. Eat it. The, the, the pot that killed became the pot that nourished. All right? The food that is for death became the food that gave life. Excuse me. If somebody go and carry flour and begin to pour it into poison, you will discover that real flour cannot cure poison. But what, what, what happened there? In the mind of Elisha, you flour, I pour you into that poison and you must now be healed. He didn't pray, he didn't speak to the food. He just said, eat it. And he ate it. They ate it. These people, he says, serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. There was nothing harmful in the pot. If you read from verse, verse 40, 42 to the end of it, the same thing. He fed a hundred people with, the, let me read it to you, because you can identify with this with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A man came from Baal uh, Shalisham, bringing the man, bringing the man of God 20 loaves, 20 loaves of Baal, barley bread, baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elijah said, 20 loaves of bread. How can I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked. But Elisha's answer, give it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even some of you, when that servant said that, you will leave the bread and you begin to tell, what's the, what is the matter with you? How much, how long will I be talking to you? I told you to do something, you are not doing it. Elijah is not in that business, my friend. The fact is that these guys have to eat. The loaves of bread that he has is just 20. And even that 20 cannot feed 20 people. And they are 100. He said, give it to them. <laughs> then he now said, for this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some leftover." Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over according to the word of the Lord. Now, word of faith provoke prophetic utterance. Stand upon your feet. Word of faith provoke prophetic utterance. You discover that this man spoke not by God. He spoke by himself. But God said, I have put my word in your mouth. So he spoke by himself. And after he had spoken, someone challenged him, and then he spoke again. And then God spoke. You will see the same with Elijah in chapter 17 that I shared with you yesterday. Now, do you know what? I want you to speak with the mouth of God that he has given to you. I want to look at circumstances in your life that need to change tonight. This is the first day of the month of October that you are marching down the mountain to enter the year 2023. Now you begin to make declaration concerning yourself. Lift up your voice and begin to speak. Whatever you speak now, recognize it is not your word, but the word of God. It is not your word, but the word of God. Speak into every aspect of your life. If you have been waiting on God for one thing or the other, now begin to call those things to be. Begin to command those things to come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Speak into the heavens. Ephesians 1.3, God has richly blessed us in the heavenly places. Begin to call those things to manifest. Begin to call whatever you want from God. Begin to call them to manifestation. Begin to call them to manifestation. Declare according to the scriptures to your life. Yes, there will be plenty in my house throughout the season of recession. Because the Lord has said to us, there will be plenty in this church. There will be promotion. This is October. This month will not end without everyone being promoted. There will be exaltation, elevation, according to the word of the Lord. No one among us in this house that enter into this month will remain the same by the end of October. Something will happen to you from heaven. The hand of God will be stretched over you from heaven. It is your time to manifest. 
It is the word of God. Speak it. Call abundance. Call manifestation of health. Call healing to your body. Call strength to your spirit. Call the gift of the Holy Spirit upon you. In this month of October, begin to declare in the name of the Lord, what you are looking for will be found. Yes, says the Lord. What you are waiting for will catch up with you. Yes, says the Spirit of hosts, of the Lord of hosts. What has been delayed, that has been hindered, shall be restored. That is the covenant of God for this month. For the Lord will restore to you the year the locusts have eaten. The Lord will restore to you the year the locusts have eaten. Everything that man has hindered you, in this month they shall come to pass. Everything, everything that the devil has hindered you, by the word of God you claim them back. You speak the word of God to the kingdom of hell. It breaks through the barriers of Satan. As God had promised you, you enter into the manifestation. In this very year, so it is. So it is. So it is. Speak with your mouth exactly what you want from the Lord. Command your doors to open. Command ways to be made for you in the wilderness. Command mountain before you to become a level ground. If you have been having problem with an attitude of your life that you don't like and those attitudes will come again, rebuke them from today and command them they should get out of you and never return back to you in the name of Jesus.